but it's funny because they say to me, oh, you're an artist, I would love to see what you do. And I say to myself, you, you sure? Many people who see my work Either they fall in love with what they see or at times are really bothered by it and don't know how to speak to me about it. And I find that really interesting. I actually find it hilarious. My name is Gerardo Castro. I am originally from Puerto Rico. Most people think that I'm from New York, but I was born in Puerto Rico, raised in New York. I was raised by a family that were always very creative people. None of them had any education in the arts, but what I mean by creative is that my father was a carpenter, my mother was a tailor, a seamstress, um, my brothers were musicians. I'm the only one in the family that picked up the brush. No one else did. It wasn't part of probably how they thought that someone could ever make a life or a career. When I realized that art was my thing, I, it was at a very young age. One of my favorite things that I remember as a kid was that my mother bought me at a very young age a set of colored pencils and a whole bunch of paper and it made my entire world change. Especially because I realized that she knew that there was something that she saw in me. And at a very young age, everything I did came from a point in which I had lived what I was painting. My work was always about sexuality, about gender, about culture. Um, I, I, I can't see myself painting an apple, and if I did, it'd probably be the most sexual apple I've ever painted. These two pieces are from my latest series, titled, Hazlo como hombre, Do it like a man. Again, it's, it's issues that deal with the, the questioning of what is masculinity. Because in society, there's these, these norms that we are supposed to follow when you're considered a man, especially in the Latino community. We call it machismo. But the work itself deals with the, the concept of questioning what is masculinity. Because it's just because you are this very masculine man that I put in these makeup situations with drag, I call them drag, does not mean that they are less of a man than someone else is. I, I can honestly say that I'm very thrilled that my work does so. Um, there are people, interestingly enough, there are more straight people who buy my work than gay people. More white people buy my work more than African American and Latino people. So here I am questioning this whole idea of gender, this idea of, of colonialism, with my work that deals with religions of the Afro-Caribbean and Afro-Cuban religions, and yet the people who are the most um, receptive to it are white people. Now, obviously I just don't do this because I have the other works that are the burnings. I decided I wanted to play with this idea of the human figure. So the burnings, again, deal with the human body. But in that case, the human body that I used was my own. So in the series that I've been working on, it's called Fire and Indigo, what I did was that I drew my body into a piece of steel. I cut the silhouette of my body and then I blowtorch it onto paper. I then manipulate the figure, manipulate myself, because again, I, I'm so in love with transformation. The transformation of masculinity into femininity, the transformation of my own body into something else. And that's where that whole series of the fire came in. And I wanted to use fire because fire has a lot to do with religious and spiritual connotations of transformation. Sometimes it can take me a month to finish one. But again, because the process is so important to me, how I go about the entire concept from beginning to end, that to me is so important. The process I enjoy, so I love the issues that I encounter when I, when I paint, the issues that I encounter when I do the burnings, the, the resolutions that happen during the trial and errors of creating my work are more important to me than the end result. The end result just looks good.
because I look at them and I'm like, yeah, you look good, man. And the fire series are very different to this. It's almost as if there's two different people painting them. Newberg Art Supply, it's a art supply store that my partner Michael and I opened. One of the first things we, we noticed, especially myself, when I came here 13 years ago, was that I was wondering where artists would buy art supplies. Because being an artist, that's the first thing I'm looking for, is like, where am I gonna buy my art supplies? There were no art supply stores in Newburgh. And we knew that there was a need in the community for, for there um, to be a place where people can come and not only buy art supplies, but get to know the city a little bit better. And that's where Newburgh Art Supply comes in. So it's our ninth year where we have been now working with the community at many levels. When I when I when people ask me, so what is art to me? I say well, anything that, that gives me a voice is gonna be my art. And my voice doesn't come from someone else giving it to me. It just doesn't. So there is no one thing of what art is. But what I do know for sure is that whoever decides to enter this field of the arts, their art should have a presence of who they are. I was recently asked the same question about what was wrong with someone's artwork. And I said, what's the worst thing that could happen in someone's work is the absence of their presence. When you don't find yourself within your work, there's a problem.